Yes, welcome into the College Loop A-Day Analysis. Dylan, we spent an entire week talking about Auburn football leading up to the annual spring scrimmage. The first one under new head coach Hugh Freeze, and it was a bit damp out, um, some might say. I was. Uh, it was chilly, it was cold, it was wet, and uh, people were slipping and sliding all around. TJ Finley at one point went on a slip and slide ride <laughs> right down the middle of the field, which was like I un- unironically very funny. Uh, it just looked like he was on a slip and slide. I'm not even making fun of the dude. I, it actually looked kind of fun. Like I would have been down to try that. Uh, but I am here, Sitar, joined as always by my partner in crime, Dylan Lark. Dylan, do you enjoy your de- time at 8 day today? Oh, uh, well, from watching from the stands, uh, um, I I enjoyed it for the most part. The Frank Thomas statue was awesome. Uh, it was cool to see that. Uh, the ceremony was awesome as well. A cool moment. Yeah. Uh, A day, uh, the rain kind of put a, a damper on things, damper a on things. <laughs> but I mean, nothing beats seeing a Brie bomb, uh, while sitting at Jordan Hare stadium. That's something I did not have on my bucket list for today. Uh, but overall the game went, uh, yeah, it went. I, I actually, I'll be honest. I actually kind of found it enjoyable. I thought there were some, some interesting parts. There were um, a lot of interesting parts. Yes. For, uh, for but... football gurus like us. Uh, <laughs> I thought it, I thought, I thought it was enjoyable. But when we talk about that first position we're going to talk about today, uh, are we starting quarterbacks? Yeah, well, we'll go and jump right into it, Dylan. I'm glad you, glad you, glad yeah, you got it. Because let's, like let's, quarter, quarterbacks were, mm, yeah. Let, I mean, I mean, let's let's just let's just be honest. It was slippery. It was wet. And and, and Hugh Freeze even said in his, in his post game, I'll use that in air quotes. That's the best way I know how to say it. Um, post game press conference uh, earlier, or I guess po- after the game, uh, about about this team that they wanted to throw the football more today and they couldn't because it's raining. And and you know what? That's actually not terrible practice. If you want to spin zone it a little bit, you're inevitably going to have a couple of games where you're playing in some, in some crappy weather. Yeah. And, and um, it's, it's not the worst thing. And, and it really played to the benefit of that run game today. But as far as the quarterbacks go, that's where we'll start with Holden Jerner, TJ Finley and Robbie Ashford. They were combined five of 12 for 60 yards and uh 42% completion rate today. Now, your standout moments was Robbie Ashford uh, connecting to Tavares Dawson for a 39-yard strike, and that was a dot of a pass. Uh, I don't want to have a callback to the Iron Bowl in 2022, but it really was reminiscent of, of that kind of accuracy and, and, and the kind of accuracy Auburn fans are hoping to see out of Robbie Ashford this year. Uh, he was really strong with the RPO, in my opinion. I, th- I thought that, that Robbie made the right calls, which you know he's going to tuck it and run more than he's not, but – I don't want to read too much into that, and you can't. Let's keep in mind it's a spring scrimmage, Dylan. Yeah. Tell me I'm not crazy here, and 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 and, and please at least echo me and, and acknowledge acknowledge this. I thought that his 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 presence of mind in the in the RPO situations, he looked solid. And you're gonna have to tuck it and run in rain game. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that's Robbie's bread and butter is the uh, run game, and I really think he showed that today uh, with his ability. You know, if the pocket bre- broke down. He gave, he gave it a chance. He gave the offense a lot of chance, which is something we didn't see from last year's Robbie. And, I mean, he had a few things to say about last year's Robbie uh, in his own uh, little interview that, you know, I'm not going to echo if you want. Just go watch it because it, I don't want it to come off as me saying it. But I, I think Robbie showed a lot of poise. Uh, and rain game, I, I'm i okay with him having been going one for three, especially if the one for three goes for 39 yards, which is – it was a beautiful ball, and Kai and Lee couldn't have played it any better than he did. And when you're going through the walk walkthrough drills, when it was not raining super hard, I thought Robbie looked solid. Um, oh, yeah. Robbie I, I thought looked- I thought he looked looked fine. I also thought Holden Gurner looked fine today. Um, three for five uh, passing. I know it was only for 17 yards, but remember, a lot of these are check down dump offs. Uh, Gurner showed us that he was maybe a little more mobile, or has worked on 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 some uh, what's the word I'm looking for elusiveness in the off season uh, that that we didn't see out of him even in a day last year. Gurner looked strong in terms of his presence in the pocket. Uh, I think Q was maybe not pleased 100% with this group in general, uh, with a couple of their their decision makings on 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 specifically. He kept mentioning the RPO, but but as a whole, I thought I thought Gurner looked strong. I looked Ash, I thought Ashford looked r- relatively strong compared to what benchmark we expected them to be. And you throw in the fact that it's a rain game. There's only so many elements there. That being said, I thought TJ Finley looked pretty rough. Um, and 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 I, this is not a dig, Dylan. I want your thoughts. I mean, uh, I I went to this game. Uh, we talked about all week how we 
thought TJ Finley could have performed very well in A Day. I mean, you are going into a game where you can't get hit. So the pressure's not really there. And I mean, I saw Holden Jarner get away with a potential sack before they let him kind of, you know, just let him just let him throw it. Uh, but TJ Finley, I saw several times where he just made the wrong read. And one time he got he really got bailed out. Uh it was a deep ball uh to I think it was either to, to Tavarish. Uh, but I it was a triple coverage. And I look I was watching the ball move. And as I saw the ball get batted down, and they call pass interference on it, but that's neither here nor there, I look to the left a little bit, and Coy Moore, your boy that you've been preaching about. Coy oh, Moore, truth, yes. He was standing there without a single white jersey within 20 to 30 yards of him. Because Just, he's a monster getting open, yes. Yeah, because the deep there was busted coverage all over the place, and the quarterback and T.J. Finley – threw it to the guy in triple coverage, and he got bailed out by a pass interference. Yeah. It, it, he made a lot of bad reads. And I, I don't want to come off as me, like, bashing T.J. Finley, but when I watch a quarterback look down, I, I saw Holden Jarner do it today, and I talk about how he looked a little scared in the pocket last year. I saw Holden look to his left, saw his wide receiver that he was going to throw to fall, step back, moved around the pocket, threw to the right. That's what a quarterback should be doing, and T.J. Finley did not do that. And, yeah, he had that nice little slip and slide. Proceeded moment. through. Yeah, and it was all fun and nice watching T.J. have that little slip and slide uh, going on. But, I mean, when it comes to passing, he had a check down for four yards, and he also had a check down, uh, one of his incompletions. I don't know. You uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? When he stepped yes. up in the pocket and he overthrew Nick Martiner? Yeah, which is impressive. Yeah, how do you overthrow a six foot six guy, especially being six foot seven? You know, it's interesting that that you mentioned Nick Martiner and and the, my my closing thoughts on the quarterbacks before we step over into the wide receiver room because we're going to talk wide receivers, we're going to talk running backs, and then we're going to mention in in my opinion, actually, we can go ahead and mention this as we transition from quarterbacks, the improvement in the offensive line. Um, Holden Gurner had an interesting interesting quote after the game, uh, and. And let me tell you, there's some reporters out there that got some more stones than I do, and I applaud you guys uh, for asking the tough questions. And I know that that's what we're there for, but sometimes it's like, oh, my God, read a room. <laughs> but he was asked, uh, and, and and I can't remember off the top of my head who asked him, um, but but Gurner was asked, hey, you know, there is a lot of speculation. And, and Hugh Freeze mentioned that they're not opposed to going and getting a portal quarterback, which is without saying I'm going to get a quarter, portal quarterback, that's what he is saying, or at least that, that's the goal. That was mentioned to Holden Gurner, and they asked him about his thoughts. And, and his response was, this entire quarterback room is working hard. And, and, I, and I know there's a little bit of coach speak and a little bit of you know PR breeding there. But whatever. I, I thought his response was very mature, which do with this as you will. His, his, his wording was something to the effect of, yes, we're a competitive group. We're trying to get better every single day. I don't doubt that. I don't think either that's bull. I, I really don't. I don't doubt it. And then, then, then he followed that by saying, ultimately, it's the cold coach's decision. And I respect their decision. And, and I thought that was interesting, uh, and obviously that's, that's the right thing to say. But if nothing else, if Holden Gurner winds up in a boat where maybe Auburn just doesn't work out for him, he is selling himself well, PR-wise, um, to be a very mature guy. And I thought he showed maturity on the field today, too. Oh, yeah. um, so that's my closing, closing, closing piece. That being said, if I have to pick one of these three guys after today, I think I would probably side with you. I think Ashford probably looks best fit um, for, for an RPO scheme. Yeah. Under under Hugh Freeze, should that be what they are truly trying to pursue? And and if and if you're scheming for the RPO, I would think you're scheming for Robbie, um, unless there's a guy in the portal, um, which you scheme for the guys you have, and then it's a bonus if you can go get them. Uh, if you're if you're scheming for Robbie Ashford, I think RPO suits him the best. You and I've been saying that for a long time. Let's talk about this off of the line for a second here. A lot of the reason that these quarterbacks looked, I mean, Holden and Robbie looked better um, than than maybe we anticipated, uh, it, all things considered. I, I know that we a lot of people are like, well, the quarterback position happened today. The whole quarterback position happened in the rain and, and on a scrimmage where you're really not even trying to throw the ball um, as much as as much as you really want to. This offensive line provided some protection today. I'm not going to say that they're the best offensive line in the SEC. I won't say they're the second, third, fourth best offensive line in the SEC. We don't know how they stack up yet. We've not seen them hit another SEC team. That being said, Dylan, I was impressed uh, with, with, with this group and how much they look to have gelled. A lot of people don't talk about the importance of that offensive line being a click. Like they need to know each other. What were your thoughts and 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 how they looked as as a, as a unit? 
I mean, it's very rare in uh, my years of watching Auburn football that I can actively look down and see, wow, he's got time in the pocket. That's like what when I when I brought the Holden Jariner making that read, looking to the right at, or looking to the left, seeing the receiver fall and having time to look to his right. Uh, that was mind blowing me. I've never seen that before. In that, where, well, in you a, you have, but you can't remember it. A twenty seventeen. <laughs> Uh, up until a certain point of that year. But this Auburn offensive line is like a weird mesh of last year's freshmen and transfers. It's this weird coagulation that works out so perfectly. I mean, looking at the starting offensive line, I believe it was Gunnar Britton at right tackle. Uh, Cameron Stutz at right guard. Uh, I believe uh, Avery Jones at center. Connor Alou at left guard, which I – uh, Which he played well. He played well at left guard. He played very well. Uh, and I believe Dylan Wade at left tackle. Which I think right, based on the day, I don't want to say it's the best offensive line, but it's a pretty daggum good one. Especially because if... I think it's solid. We can say solid right now. Solid. It is solid. Uh, but I mean, I've already come on and said that the offensive line is going to be better than it has been since 2017. Uh, which, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> it, it, it's really hard to be wrong. Uh, it's hard for that offensive line to be worse. You know, knock on wood. But... Sure. Watching the offensive line today, it was a breath of fresh air to see a quarterback, even in a scrimmage, even when the defensive line isn't trying. We didn't see this last year's A-Day. We haven't seen this the last, previous year's A-Day. The offensive line has been such a struggle for Auburn football over the past – how long was 2017 ago? Five, seven, Six almost years. five years? Six years? Almost a decade, it feels like. <laughs> uh, Watching an offensive line actually prevent pressure on a quarterback, no matter the situation it was put in the day, was awesome. And I mean, like you, you told me uh, whenever you saw me uh, when you were moving from the press box to the field, Gunnar Britton's huge. Oh, yeah. Can I give my professional uh, interpretation on that real quick? Um, <laughs> Gunnar Britton and Connor Lou are huge, which, by the way, I've heard some fun stuff about Gunnar Britton. Um, that, that son of a gun is going to the NFL draft after next year. Oh, After sure. that, then that son of a gun is going to play professional football. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm working on my 2020 uh, four mock draft as we speak. Number one overall pick is going to be Gunnar Britton. <laughs> going to go ahead and put it out there. Number one pick, Gunnar Britton. Uh, Connor Lou somehow is going to go as a soft. He's that good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. But I hope right. he doesn't. <laughs> but the uh, offensive line looked great. I, I even think the offensive line looked good on the two side as well. I no, they, 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 they did. Like the one and two offensive line look really good, and all that being said, the three three defensive the the third defense I will say, Concerning. Bit rough, but we'll yeah. get there when we get there. We'll get there when we get there. The offensive line looked good, and we know this because look at the rushing numbers. I know it's a rain game. I know it's a, a scrimmage. I get it, and, and and I don't. I'm not digging into this more than more than I usually would. But I do think it's nice to have a bigger sample size. We got to see these guys go through walkthroughs. We got to see how they go about things. Uh, a lot of a lot of this being able to be on the field for me today was really cool because I got to see kind of attitudes and dynamics that I could really talk for a couple hours about Dylan because I, I was fascinated to see uh, a different level of discipline. Uh, and, and, and and this is not just me trying to bow down to Hugh Freeze. I don't even know if that's all him to be completely honest with you. Um, I, I, I think he's assembled a good staff, a very good staff. And, and and I think that they just go about things a little bit differently. But we th this rushing game was, was was impressive to me. And and if you, if you just look at at the numbers alone, Sean Jackson, and welcome to the Sean Jackson show. Uh, <laughs> Thirteen attempts on seventy seven yards, which is about what we expected from Sean Jackson in in a day. Uh, I, I, those numbers I will not hold. I, I I feel strong in that. But he he looked physical. He looked good as a physical runner, as a guy that if if some some of these backs, some of these your Demari Alstons, your 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 uh, your Jeremiah Cobbs, if they get banged up and you need a guy that can really kind of run behind the pads and then I, I i guess you throw jar cross hunter in there i just think they're a different style but sean jackson looks solid um mario alston looks solid five five attempts on 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 43 rushing yards uh i mean you didn't really see anything out of jarquez you saw four touches uh jason jones uh, he had 11 touches for 50 yards uh, I, was, I guess this is all to say dylan i'll, I'll give you a two-part question here one, how much did this speak to the improvement? You, you still got me right. I'm, I'm, I have a little banner that says internet connection unstable. Just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, it cut out for like a little bit. I uh, just, just cut it out. But to answer your question, oh. 
the, run, the part of the run right room that really stood out to me was yeah, Sean Jackson a popped off, but he popped off last year's eight A two. Eight A's made for those fourth and fifth string running backs. Right. Because uh, you don't you don't want to get Jarquez hurt. No. Uh, even then, Jarquez averaged six yards and uh, six point eight yards for his four carries. But looking down, the uh, Damari looked really good. Looked awesome. Uh, and I can't think on the dime of the last time I've seen an Auburn running back take a take get the ball, take a step, see the didn't see a hole, and then did a full 90 degree turn to the right to go around the offensive line. Crazy. I mean, I turning on a dime doesn't like just happen. Video game for the rain, especially in the rain. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's wild to me that he did that without tripping or falling or anything. And I mean, Sean Jackson even slipped and fell on his butt (laughs) uh, in like the uh, third slash fourth quarter, whatever that was over there. But it also goes to stand, if you look at the rushing numbers, Robbie Ashford put up a lot of rushing numbers too. And I know we're talking about running backs right now, but it's kind of hard not to bring up his, him in the running uh, because he rushed 38 yards. And I I think the I think Hugh and the refs kind of did a good job of kind of letting Robbie run it a little bit. You know, last year whenever Robbie went to go uh, take off or, you know, when D. Davis a couple of years back, it looked like they didn't want him to run at all. It's even like you can't hit him. You touch them, they're down. Right. It, like this year, they they were a little bit more adamant on, you know, Robbie's kind of, he's going to be hard to catch. He's hard. He's a hard quarterback to put your hands on anyways. And it's like, if you get a finger on him, it doesn't really count. And I think they did a good job of making sure that, hey, when Robbie gets going, just let him go. Just let him go until someone's actively going to hit him and then stop the call to play dead. And I, I think Brian uh, Batty, Batty, uh, P- take pick your poison. Pick your pick. We call him really. Uh, I I think he performed very well. I the running back room, outside uh, of of start putting Jarquez on the map. Even though I think he did very well for what he did in his short. I lost time. a bet about Jarquez Hunter. By the way, you lost a bet about Jarquez Hunter. What, what were you What were you betting about Jarquez Hunter with? As you're in, second. off a little bit. <laughs> I'm Go sorry. What, what What was the bit about Jarquez Hunter? My ass. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll go and I'll go. Sorry, I had to riff for a second there. I'll have to reset my my router after this before the next show. Before you guys get more content, yeah, uh, right here on the on the college loop. My apologies. Of course, I have a beautiful setup today and don't have the Wi Fi. Go figure, right? And this is how mobile works. Uh, but I did have a bet with Ethan Miller. Uh, I said that Jark Boys Hunter was going to have three carries, and uh, uh, Ethan Miller said he was going to have uh, going to have at least four carries. And we bet a handshake on it. So I did owe Ethan Miller a hearty handshake after the game because there were four carries and uh i felt pretty good about the under of three and a half carries and uh he got four so so here we are that being said running back room looks strong let's talk about receivers for a second i'm sorry to, if you need to complete the thought feel free I, you cut out for a second there oh it's fine uh i pretty much just talk about riffed about how they gave robbie ashford the chance to run the ball as uh you go in, you're going in and out you're good now. Wide receivers. Uh, can, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hop over to the wide receivers, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put the ball on the tee for you, and we're gonna try to resolve this whole this whole conundrum so we can we can keep the good content rolling. Of course, I, like I said, it sound good and look good, and then of course this happens with a fresh college loop T-shirt on. By the way, got to got to got to rep it. Shout out to Dylan's girlfriend for hooking us up. If you guys want one of these, let us know. We could probably hook you up. That's probably not a problem, yeah. and uh, we can we can make that happen. <laughs> we know a guy. Anyways, let's talk about this receiving group. Uh, it looks like your your ones. Are going to be, you know, Camden Brown. <laughs> that's that's a given. Uh, I think I think Coy Moore is going to find himself in that one one group, um, and Nick Martiner and Rivaldo Fairweather. That's that's the receiving tight ends. I'm, I'm throwing them all. Football catchers, <laughs> primary football catchers, pass catchers, if you will. <laughs> yes, yes yeah, yeah, catchers of of the passing of the footballs. Uh, that that looks like that's going to be your ones. There's no way to be blown away by this group in a rain game, but there was a way to be disappointed in Lana King. Yeah, there were a couple of those. Uh, you go into the off season and all you hear about is Landon King return. Landon King is back. He's back. He's going to get better. He's going to be the guy. And uh, the spring, the whole spring in general has kind of just been the opposite of that. And honestly, it's kind of hard not to put him up there in the category of most overhyped players Auburn's had in the spring because – Hopefully something changes over the summer and, and uh, when he comes back in the fall, he's just like a monster. 
But I mean, I saw it in the mon- Monday practice. I saw it today. Rain or not, you have those gloves on, and I've those football gloves are. I mean, it's illegal in the ML in the MLB, but there's some sticky stuff on those gloves. And rain or not, those passes were catchable for Landon King, for a guy who's such an athletic monster. Like those passes were catchable, and I I know it's rain. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't disagree. I, I don't I don't disagree. I was I was also I I, I want to almost say equally as disappointed Nick Martiner. Um I wanted to see a little bit more out of him today. I know I, I get it. I perspective. I, I keep saying that. And I and I have to keep checking myself there because I don't want to overreact. But I did expect a little more out of Nick Martiner. Then again, he only got three targets in a rain game. Um and and and, and two of them were iffy. Uh football is whether or not you could even catch them. Well, one of them was the overthrow by TJ Finley. Uh, yeah. So he he might he probably would have got ten or fifteen yards on that one alone. Yeah, so. yeah. There 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 is that. It'll be interesting to see. I'm still firmly on the Nick Martiner can be a very 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 talented wide receiver at Auburn trained. So I'm not not gonna dig too deep into that. So the other side of the football, Dylan, and I want to start with the Jack if that's okay. Uh, the Jack position. Fully down. Um, Elijah McAllister starting. Uh, I, I I I this is the one thing that I'm gonna pull away from a day. And, and I'm going to go ahead and, and and lock this in unless I hear differently over the over the course of the summer and fall camp. Uh, there's a reason you bring Elijah McAllister in. I thought he looked solid today. Um, two tackles, both solo tackles, uh, and, and, and playing with the ones. Keldrick Falk certainly going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but but Hugh even mentioned that he likes Keldrick a lot. Uh, that being said, there is a reason they bring these guys in, and and it's not always just because of their warm body. Clearly, uh, the the Auburn defense and, and Hugh Freeze's staff thinks Elijah McAllister can play football. I think Elijah McAllister can play a very high level of football. Curious to get your thoughts on the Jack position before we slide over to the rest of that defensive line. Well, the Jack position, uh, I mean, it's I honestly watching it today, it's got to be one of the most loaded positions that no one's talking about. Because uh, Keldrick Falk, uh, as you brought it up, Hugh likes him, and it's really hard not to like him. Because uh, oh, how do you not? The potential is. Whoa! It, through it, the roof, through the roof, uh, through the ceiling, through the clouds. Uh, it's in the uh, atmosphere as we speak. That's where the potential is for a country <laughs> Uh But I mean, we talk about a lot. We thought we we think still part of the country Falk is going to be battling out for the starting position all the way to fall. He and can still win it. He can very well still win it. And I mean, when you look at it, Elijah McAllister does have more experience than Kendrick does, and it's kind of hard not to bring in an SEC guy and not give him the nod. Uh, sure. And look at the looking even deep in the jack position. Dylan Brooks is still very talented, but when you look at him, he doesn't have the experience that Elijah does, and he doesn't really have the potential that Keldrick does. Uh, no offense to Dylan Brooks, I still think he's very talented, and I think that uh, sadly, uh, sadly for Auburn, but good for him. I I do think eventually he will be entering the portal, which do what's best for your career. Don't don't be a third sure. string if you don't want to be. You don't have to be. He's gonna sure. make the other team very happy if he does transfer, but the the Jack position is just so loaded. Like, and with Keldrick Falk and Elijah McAllister performing as well as he did today, and it, honestly, they did pretty well despite the fact that the offensive line played out of their mind for the first time since 2017. So, Jack position needs to be talked about a little bit more. Couldn't agree more. And let, let's let, let's talk line, and then then we'll 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 quickly actually let's go knock out linebackers. We'll do linebackers, then we'll go to defensive line. Oh, okay. Um, that room needs help, and they need to go to the portal, and that's about all I can say. Yeah, uh, that's you hit the nail on the head. Talk defensive line now, right? No, I, yeah, I, you... I, I, this is, and that's no slight to Demario Tolan. Um, uh, in his post game, uh, Hugh Freeze even mentioned he likes Demario. I, I think a lot of us like Demario. Uh, it's a matter of I don't, I don't know that he was getting the coaching he deserves at LSU, and I, I don't think that he's progressed to, to where where we we were hoping that he would be. Uh, come fall camp in 2023 that that all to say like 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 we mentioned i, I think the college loop's going to leave it here right now with the linebacker conversation that room needs some help and they need some development and some coaching uh and 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 going to the portal is probably the solution there and i, I certainly think that the three positions to look for in the portal are going to be quarterback wide receiver and and linebacker i don't think that they're done let's let's talk about your your impressions of the defensive line we know that third unit is something that you wanted to Quickly mention, and and we don't have a ton of time left on this show. I don't want to run too too long, but let's let's talk. I want to hear your thoughts on the defensive line, and we'll collaborate on the DBs, and we'll get out of here. 
Uh, I think overall they were just pretty solid group. Uh, Jeffrey Emba caught my eye a lot. Uh, yes. and I don't even think he was on the starting uh, D line. I think that he was behind. He was with the twos. He was with the twos. And uh, I mean, one and twos, I, I think the one and two defensive line looked great. And I mean, that they were all, both also led by Electra McAllister and Keldrick Falk. And Jeffrey Emba made his name uh, very clear and out there in the open. Sure. But I look even deeper than that. And, you know, D line is one of those positions where you're you're subbing every every play. Uh, they're, they're big boys. They are very big boys, and they need their Gatorade. They need their water breaks more often than <laughs> they're most hitting of them. hard every play. They're getting hit. They're doing the hitting. They're running. They're they're running just as fast as those corners are, but they need they don't have the conditioning the corners do <laughs> or the weight. They're running at they're running at the same intensity as those corners. Now yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. When I look past the twos after Jeffrey Emba, I mean the talent level through the floor. Uh, because I don't I, I like Sean Jackson. I think he's a great pass, pass blocker. I think he's a pretty decent runner. Uh Sean Jackson should never be <laughs> averaging uh almost eight yards a carry. Sure. On on your defensive line. Sure. I love Sean Jackson. I would love it if he broke out as as Auburn's like fifth thousand yard rusher this season. But fifth thousand yard rusher. <laughs> but uh, I, the defensive line after after three after two, it, it's rough. It's you you gotta keep them off the field. Really, it's like yeah. I gotta say, keep them off the field. I think you nailed it, Dylan. Um, and, and a, but a group that you don't have to worry about your twos and your threes. These DBs are just loaded. Um, uh, we know that one. We know one thing for sure, and and Donovan Coffin did not play today. Uh, that that's just I I think he's still a one, uh, or yeah. one slash two. I think I think you're looking at Donovan Coffin and Nehemiah Pritchett. I think that that's what you're looking at, and and, and, and quite frankly, it should be. Um, and and th- those those are two of your ones, um, in in that DB room, uh, and you're you obviously got a couple more. Those those are two guys we know for sure, uh, and and Donovan Coffin once he's healthy. I thought Nehemiah Pritchett looked solid today, man. I mean, I, I really think he's going to have a hell of a football season and, and really turn some heads. And I've, I've said it time and time again right here in the college loop. I think Nehemiah Pritchett could be a first or second round draft pick. Um, I think certainly a second round draft pick in the 2024 uh, NFL draft. Your thoughts on the on, on this DB room? Uh, my boy, Kyan, uh, he looked good. He got burned a couple of times. He's a freshman. Um, and, and and that happens. It's, he, he should still be in high school. Uh, so uh, let's remember, like, he was scheduled to be hitting guys that were 18, not dudes that were 23 and 24 right, right now. So your thoughts? He broke the DB room, and uh, yeah, Nehemiah Pritchett looked, well, looked pretty good. Uh, Donald Kaufman didn't play. DJ James looked good, uh, but that's, like, you know, per use. Sure. Uh, I thought Caleb Wooten did very well in uh, – Yes. In, uh, whenever he was put in – he put in with the ones, and – I, he looked like the good side of Smoke Monday, uh, as in the fact sure. he blitzed, he blitzed very well. Uh, but I, I believe his coverage is very much uh, above the scale of Smoke Monday. Uh, so I think after Donovan Kaufman and I believe Jalen Simpson are going to be the two starters at safety. Yep, Caleb, nice. Wooden, you don't miss a beat with Caleb Wooden in that you, in the safety backfield. You see, I, I was giving you the layup there. I was waiting for you to talk about my boy Jalen Simpson. Simp looked good, man. Um, I, I I thought Simp looked right. Um, that was one of those situations where I was kind of curious to see how he trans- transitions over into this new defensive scheme. We knew when when he he and Nehemiah said they were coming back that, that that's, this was going to be a big addition to this Auburn secondary, or, or big retention, rather, um, to this Auburn secondary. Man, it, DJ James, Donovan Kaufman, Nehemiah Pritchett, Jalen Simpson, I think you're fine. <laughs> I think I think you are just in, in really, really good shape, man. I am super high on these DBs just along with uh, alongside pretty much everybody else. But, I mean, damn, are they going to be fun. <laughs> and uh, good luck throwing the ball on Auburn this year. Say what you want about Simp and, 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 and what you want about Nehemiah uh, and what, what happened to them in 2022. Listen, wipe that 2022 campaign from a lot of people's records. Uh, a lot of people really deserve uh, more of more more attention for that. And they both got better when when you can. Um, Byron Haskins. Um, so, uh, you know it, 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 that that kind of goes with it. But I did want to throw in Simp look good, man. I mean, I know he didn't get a ton thrown his way, and, and they didn't we didn't throw the ball much today. Auburn, Auburn they didn't get a lot thrown their way at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, the the ball didn't get, th- get didn't get thrown much, but these guys are still recording uh, tackles uh, and recording stats. In, in a game where you're not throwing the football, and, and, and that's encouraging. I know that the offense hung 24. I personally think that this offense has got a lot more talent um, than, than people are giving them credit for. 
Yeah. That being said, that's going to be our A-Day recap. If oh. you guys – what's up? You're forgetting a very valuable piece of a of a football team there, Tar. Yeah, you're about to talk about special teams. I'm about to talk about special teams. Uh, Auburn went three of four on field goals. Uh, longest of the day was 39 yards by Mr. Alex McPherson. And at that first miss, uh, he kind of undershot it, which I think we need to talk about a little bit, but not a lot. But I think he kind of picked it back up after the with the sure. thirty nine and thirty three yarder. Uh, I mean, in the it's really hard to kick in the rain. It, it, if you are not trained as a kicker, it's hard to kick in the sunny and seventy five weather that on the twenty yard line. So uh, I think Alex is him. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the rain just really hindered that forty nine yarder. Zero zero concerns on that on that front, and also, um, uh, I mean, yeah, it's it, I'm going to go and make two excuses for Alex. One, it's his. Uh, th- there's an element of nerves, um, just because the starting job is inherently his this year, and there's very high expectations. And two, um, as my dad would say, it's slippery, more slippery than owl crap uh, <laughs> out there. You could see the water kicking up when he was kicking the field goal. So. That 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 being said, no reason to panic. Very very excited for his future. I think he's going to be wind up on that top five scoring list at at Auburn. So that being said, that is the college loop rundown for a day. This was our takeaways. I'm sure we'll be talking more a day uh, recap as as we go along. And and Dylan and I get to go do film study. If you guys want to see our a day superlatives in terms of offensive MVP, dim, defensive MVP, and overall a day MVP, we will be giving that on the regular show. That's on Sunday. That's coming out today. Happy Easter to those. Back, uh, those who are listening on Easter Sunday, if it's not, then hope you had a good Easter. Uh, thank you guys for for tuning in. To all of our new listeners on the loop, welcome to the loop. We're super excited to have you guys here. We met some folks today that are super, super cool guys and gals, and we're really excited to bring them on to the college loop and have them talk about what they do, how they tie into the Auburn family, and, and how, how they contribute to Auburn athletics beyond football, man. I mean, we had a really, really good – we had ourselves a day, as as I said on my Instagram caption. That being said, I am Harrison Tar at by Harrison Tar on Twitter. Check out all of my written work at the Auburn Daily. That's AuburnDaily.com. You can check them out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole nine yards. More of my, I guess, podcasting content can be found on the Auburn Daily Show every Wednesday and Friday, Wednesday with Dylan Lark, Friday with the legendary Lindsey Crosby. All the rest of my work is right here on the College Loop every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Dylan, tell everybody where you're at, and then we will stop recording this one and get right back on the mic and do it again. All right. Well, I'm Dylan Lark at your boy, the tank on Twitter is at Y A B O I the tank. And if you're watching, it's going to be right below me on this video and you catch me on the Auburn daily show every Monday with Lance Daw and Wednesday, of course, with Mr. Harrison Tar over there. I know he's not your favorite co- co-host of the show. And it's me, but you can go shout out the show. Anyway. Ellis, you were so mean. <laughs> and of course, go follow the college loop literally everywhere. That's YouTube, Spotify, Amazon podcast, Google podcast, Apple podcast, sorry, Amazon music. There we go. And of course, you got socials: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, the works. But Tar, no MySpace. Check like, subscribe, out. ring the bell. No, no MySpace. Exactly. And with all that being said, this has been the College Loop reaction to a day.